You may begin. I am Pam Davis, and tonight I'm going to talk about the final adornment of the hair. And anyone that has any questions after the call, they can reach me on my site at www.texturecaresystem.com. I want to talk about the final adornment of the hair because that is what everybody looks at at the end. That's that's the whole reason women get their hair done. It is the finality. It is like um, finishing a room. You know, the 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 finishing of it is the finality. It is what. Everybody look at and they say it's beautiful. But the thing about it, if the prior treatment of the hair is not right, the final adornment does not bring out the best in the person. So I think it's very important for us to understand that that final product that we are looking for depends on everything that is done prior to. Most of the time, People look for shiny hair or hair that is well um, used with a curling iron or curled well or things like that. And a lot of times that hides a lot of flaws, flaws in the cut, flaws in the, the treatment of the hair, moisture in the hair. Um, if the hair actually has its own oil product, you know, you really can't see that at the end. And until... After a while, the hair start looking all droopy, the fullness in the hair. All of that is the final package of the hair. So I think it's very important for us to know that it's very important for the hair. The scalp needs to be a healthy head of hair. You don't want to have your hair finished and looking good and flakes are falling, you know, from your scalp. You know, we talk about healthy hair, but what we really need to talk about is a healthy scalp. That is very important to the, the whole final product of the hair. Um, people, you know, dandruff, we talk about dandruff, but dandruff is really just a word for buildup on the scalp. And so a lot of time we say that, oh, I have dandruff, I have dandruff. Dandruff simply means that you have a buildup on your scalp. The buildup could come from a, from a shampoo. It could come from not rinsing the hair properly. It could come from a conditioner buildup. It can come from just so many things, not not just dirt buildup and product buildup. And most of the times when people shampoo their hair, especially at home, the pressure, you don't have the pressure in the hose a lot of time in a shower to really get all that comes from the shampoo out of the hair. A lot of times people use... Very creamy shampoos. They are very, um, they are big selling point. Very creamy shampoos are a big selling point because they put a lot of fragrance in it, or they might put a detangler in it. And uh, in many cases, those things are very, very difficult to actually rinse completely out, and you have the residue and the buildup settling back on the scalp because everything that is left under here settles back on the scalp. It falls right back to the scalp because you have to remember that gravity is going to fall down. It's going to fall right back on the scalp. It's going to build up on the scalp. But it's very important to vigorously get the shampoo off and conditioners, unless it's like a light leave-in conditioner, off the hair, off the scalp, so the scalp is good and clean. Your best shampoo is always a clear shampoo. Is always your better shampoo. And, of course, a botanical product is always good. And when I say botanical, I mean a product that has no animal testing in it. And that's very important. So uh, good shampoos are very important. Good conditioners are very important. And rinsing well is very important. Of course, the treatment of the hair is also very important. As I said before, you can't have healthy hair. You can have hair that is in good or bad condition, and that depends on the treatment of the hair, and that all depends on the texture of the hair, the, the, what the hair needs, the frizz in the hair, the uh, curl pattern in the hair or no curl pattern in the hair, the fineness of the strands, the strands need building up, the strands need smoothing out. 
all of that is what determines what treatment each particular kind of hair needs. Everybody's hair does not need the same thing. Right now, in, in, in the black world, of course, relaxes, everybody got the same thing, and we are in the predicament that we're in today. And even with the natural hair, there are so many things that are being made for the natural hair now that it's just um, it's just like anything else. That That is the new wave, and there are so many things that people are putting on their hair now that weighs the hair down, that builds up on the hair. And the more you put all that stuff on the on your hair, after a while you can never get all of that rinsed off your hair well. So it's very important to know how much stuff you actually put in on the hair and is laying on the hair and when it's shampooed that all of it's not getting getting off and then you put some more on the hair and some more on the hair and the hair is just built up with residue and build up with products on it. So those things are important. Because the natural, tightly coiled hair, unless, if the, if it's not treated right, unless there's a lot of something on it to weigh it down, which pulls the curl down, which is what people are looking for. That's why these products are made. And all it's doing is weighing the curl down and stretching it down. But once you take it off, the curl, because the nature of a curl is to spring up, the curl is going to spring right back up. So... The, the right treatment in the hair to keep the hair light and airy is very important. One of the things that we have to understand, hair was designed to blow anyway. That's why they're individual strands. It's like the leaf on a tree. It was designed to blow. It was designed to be light. You know, so even if you're going to pin it up or do different things with it, hair in itself, by just the way it is made, lets you know it was designed to move. It was not designed to just be weighed down. It was designed to move. So those are the things that we, you know, we have to look at. And, of course, that doesn't mean that you can't adorn the hair in a braided style or a twisted style or, you know, many styles, but we have to remember that we need to take that hair down on a regular basis and clean it because dirt builds up between the braids, dirt builds up between the, the, the twists, <coughs> And all kind of residue builds up between there. And if it lingers on the hair after a while, it's very difficult to get off. Sometimes those things causes the hair to, to, to twist and dread itself and lock itself, and it's difficult to, to comb the hair. Of course, if that's what a person desire, that's that's just an individual choice of things. The final adornment of the hair also is very much depends on the haircut because the haircut is really the style of the hair. Um, many times people think the style of the hair is in the curling iron or in the gelling of the hair. The style of the hair <coughs> excuse me, is actually in the shaping of the hair. Whether the hair is long and it is shaped only on the outer perimeter, and that is where the length of the hair shows, or whether it's layered and that shows inside of the perimeter, whether it's elevated and it shows towards the the, the outer part of the inside of a perimeter, whether it's bangs, whether it's um, a, a, a wedge cut, whether it's a bob cut, angle cut, asymmetrical cut, whatever it is, all of those lines need to be blended well together to one point. So no matter what happens, no matter which way you move the head, that hair is always going to fall on point, and it's always going to fall at 360 degrees. You should never have a, have a haircut, and when you move your hair, one part of it is way out of line. You know, it all should, it's, all, it's about balance. It's all about balance. Um, getting a, a, a haircut also depends on the height of the person, the, the personality of the person, the, the dress that you're going to wear. The final adornment has to do with, you know, the the... Something that people wear, a person would wear every day. They need something that they can wear every day, but something that fits their personality, their character, so that the hair goes with the person. It all flows with the person and the individual. Uh, even on hair color, one of the things that we don't want to do is let our color be seen before we are seen. A color should look like you, like it belongs to you. 
you know, it's like walking into a room and it was painted and you just see the paint and you miss everything else about the room. So it's very important that color fits well on a person, that it's chosen well to blend with the complexion of the skin. So when you wear your color, your color actually just bring your whole personality out. It fits with you. That also is part of the package. I'm sure you guys have seen people with color, and you see the color first, you know. Yes. We don't want to. Now, Pam, know. I have a question on that. Sure. With the color, you, you, you uh, mentioned as far as uh, it should be um, a color that um, goes with them. Are you saying it must be colors that hair naturally is, or um, if they want it to be um, in a, I guess, a different color, a color that no one is born with, that people shouldn't do that? Or how should someone choose a color for their hair? No, you can use a color, you can use a permanent color, but mm-hmm. you want to pick a color that you pull the tones of the person's skin out. You know, some oh, okay. people have um, yellow in their skin, some people have red in their skin, some people have orange oh, okay. in their skin. You pull the color of the, the person's, you know, the, the color that, that's in the person's skin out. You don't want somebody who has yellow in their skin and you put red on their hair. <laughs> you know, you have to... And then you don't want a person who has um, more um, golden type tone in their in their in their complexion or brown honey in their complexion, and you go and you put a high yellow um, color on their hair and you know brassy uh, color on their hair. The other thing about coloring, one of the things that we don't even understand about coloring is that. It is really not necessary for the tightly waved hair to bleach their hair to get a nice color. And bleaching is very, very bad for the hair because it really strips it out. Bleaching is as bad as relaxing, you understand? Mm-hmm. Right. And it's really bad on the hair. And the only thing that helps a person with bleaching their hair is if they did not put any other product in their hair. And if it's all natural in the bleach, it didn't kind of get away with it. But it, it still melts the hair down. And But mm-hmm. it is really not necessary at all to get a nice color and have to bleach your hair. There, there, there are light colors that you can... Um, you can go up on your peroxide and things like that to get the color. And then a lot of people, a lot of people that are graying, they run straight to black. That is, first of all, there's no, there's no such thing as natural black hair. It's all brown. No matter how dark you see it, it's a dark brown. There's no natural black. Black is not a natural color. Black is a made-up color by mankind. And what people do is put black on their hair and then when that white hair pops out, there's such an extreme that they have to put that black again. Black is as bad as blonde because it's at one is at one end of the spectrum, the other is at the other end of the spectrum. And you have to really what's happening when you color in the hair is really you are it's a combustible action that takes place when you are putting a permanent color in the hair. So you are blowing up natural color and you are putting in a false color. So when you understand what's taking place, you have to really know what it is you're doing and how to color your hair so that you don't destroy the hair in the cortex. So what happens is that so many people choose black and if you want your hair dark and you and you use a nice dark brown, it will look black. Dark brown looks black, but it will look natural. It is no need, if you want your hair dark, to put a black color. Now, you can use black in a color to darken the color. Like say you're doing a red and you want to tone it down, you put just a little a tip of black in there. That's where you know your color. It's like you ever been to the paint shop and you see they just really when they mix in color, and it's really to just put one squeeze of something in it. Mm-hmm. And one, it, it doesn't take all of that for coloring to, to get a nice color. So sometimes just 
a, a, a fourth ounce of something make, mixed with something make it beautiful color. That's why there's the color wheel. The color wheel is just like the wave pattern, like we talked about here, runs in, in a pattern from small to large, and the color wheel runs from the light to the dark, you know, and, and one color. Color creates color, and color erases color. So the thing about it is that people can go to the store and they see a color, and they say, oh, this is a whatever brown. And what happens, different company might call their one color, might one might call their color a chestnut brown, another one would call it a warm brown. And, you know, they do that so that, you know, to differentiate, well, this is my product, but the, the consumer has no idea what that means really and what happens. What they don't tell you is that color makes color. So whatever color you have on your hair, be prepared that the color on your hair will cause the color that you put on your hair to create a color. So you are always creating a color when you add color to color. So a lot of times you see a color on a box, and they'll tell you this is the color you're going to get, but you you know you don't really know with the color of the hair you have what is going to turn out, and then you buy that color, you put it on your hair, you don't get what you see on the box <laughs> because when it mixes with the color on your hair, it's a different color than you thought it would be on the box. Then now you have a color on your hair and you want to change it, and you go out there and you get another color and you put it over that color, and you you know so and 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 people you begin creating a problem. A lot of times people have a rainbow going on on their head, you know, just a bunch of different colors. And then when you have new growth and you go and you put that last color, that last color on the new hair is going to be is going to be a totally different color than the color you have on the ends because you have already put three different colors on the end and now when the new growth takes that last color that you use on the end is going to be a different color because you are mixing it with a totally different color, which is the new year. Am I, are you, am I losing anybody? You guys understand what I'm saying? Hello? Yes, I'm just Robin. I understand what you're sharing. Okay, okay. Some, but everybody quiet, you know. <laughs> just a, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I have a question that's sure. going to take you off of this idea, though. Can, can you expound a little bit on what you're saying or what you were saying about the haircut being an endorsement? And I, I kind of understand the idea that you're sharing. However, you put so much importance on it that I want to, if you could expound on it a little bit more so I can okay, see sure. exactly where you're coming from. Okay, sure. A lot of times when, when, when people think of cutting, they think of short hair, especially black people. And a lot of times, stylists cut short. Cutting can be any length and whatever style. And But the bottom line is, whatever your hair is going to be, the cut is very important to the final look. It's just like if you're going to buy, if you buy a, a scarf, the cut is important. Everything that we do, if you build a house, is the cut. Everything is the cut. The cut is the design that gives the final so that when you paint it and when you do whatever you do to it, it is the whole cut that brings out the look. And that's what I mean. Not cutting your hair short, but knowing how to cut well when it's long or short. So when it is, when the hair is final, when it's in its final stage and you curl it and you, or even if you pin it up and you leave a piece down or whatever, Everything is flowing real nice. So, but a lot of people is really scared of cut because in most cases when they get a cut, a lot of times their hair is cut shorter than they they wish their hair to be. Because what happens is that most people do not know how to move the lines. Hair cutting is just moving lines, moving short lines to long lines. When you get in a haircut, when you're describing a haircut, if you think along with me, the only thing that you are really doing to a professional person, a professional, the only thing that that professional person should be listening for is where do you want your hair short and where do you want it long. And that's it. Because that is all a haircut is. Is really where you want the hair to fall short and where you want to fall long. Whether you fall, want it to fall long in the back, 
and angled, whether you want it to fall long in the front, like a swing line, whether you want it to come stay long at the crown, you want it to be layered at the crown. All you're doing, the only thing you're doing with a cut is changing the lines all the time. The lines are just changed all the time. So the only thing that you're really telling a person when you describe a cut, no matter how much you do it, is where you want your hair short and where you want your hair long, whether it's it's symmetrical, whether it's wedged, whatever, you see? And so once you describe that cut, then it's up to the person to know how to bring it about. Now, Pam, I I have um, um, a question just to make sure I understand what you're saying right. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, okay, since you're speaking about adornment, usually, and mm-hmm. in, in, including myself, mm-hmm. before listening to you speak, I'm thinking of when I hear adornment. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking about the flowers that I put in my hair. I'm thinking about the pins, the clips, the, the ties that I use. That, that's what I'm usually thinking about, or what I've always thought about when I think of adornment. But what I understand from what you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. um, the, the cut or what others understand as the style, like when you get, get your hair cut into a style, mm-hmm. those are also adornments. They're sure. not just they're not separate. It's like I'm going to go get a hair cut. Mm-hmm. That's the same way as uh, we see I'm going to go get my hair styled just mm-hmm. as if I'm going to pick my hair out and put a flower in it. Exactly. I'm still adorning my hair and um if I'm understanding you correctly, that's the final process in us, uh, what's the word, doing our hair. The final process took us through the washing, uh, whatever we're putting in it after, and then the final adornment. It is also the, the cut with the style, not just the things we put in it. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. All of it. All of it brings you to that final point. Without all these other things, that is needed, that final look, that final bottom oh, line, final look. you know, is your final adornment of what you want. Whether you want to put a flower in it, whether you want to put it in a French roll, whether you want to put it in a uh-huh. pinup, whether you want to braid it up or whatever, that's your final adornment of your hair. You know, that's, that's the end product. That is what people are going to see when they see you coming. You know, that is what it's like when you when you dress, you know, when you put your clothes on, your final look. And when you totally, the total package is finished, your hairstyle should go with what you are wearing. You know, it should go with everything. It should bring out you. You know, if you are wearing earrings, long earrings, whatever you're doing, all of that depends. Because people have gotten away from dressing anymore anyway, you know. Um, yes, you know, you saying that, you saying you know, people have got. You know, people have gotten away. You saying that is so true. It's reminding me, listening to you, and and, and and then Robin, stop me if I'm taking away from where you were trying to go. That statement, um, people have gotten away from dressing, is so true. Because I'm sitting here, you know, you're saying adornment. I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know. It's, I do need to get, a, you know, some more things to, to dress my hair up. And that's as far as... You know, most of us go because we, you know, it's, 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 you get busy. But when we start seeing the, the cut or the style, I guess I haven't thought about, you know, get, getting, getting a haircut or a hairstyle cut or shaped into my hair is just as important in my, um, the look that I'm looking for or my beauty as, a nice pin or a nice clip. Sure. It's something that, that we've gotten away from, and it's something that um, we don't have to get away from. I think when we slow down and we start thinking about our uh, appearance or how we look or how we feel outside of just, you know, the, what's trendy or what another person's wearing or doing, when we stick with how we want to look or what looks good or goes with us height-wise, weight-wise, mm-hmm. colors in our skin, as you were saying, mm-hmm. then we won't ever get away from it, and we will be, you know, constantly um, adding to the beauty that balances us. I have mm-hmm. to ask you, as a stylist, what would you, what do you tell or what do you recommend is um, a good balance in 
changing, but then again, not changing your look. How do you go about telling a client of yours, you know what, you know, I think such and such would look good on you. Um, to get to take a person out of the rut of pretty much looking the same just with a different flower in their hair. Well, basically, for me and my clients, num- number one, uh, when I get a client, um, I'm into re- hair repair. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, and when I get a client um, and they have damage in their hair or whatever, my my, I let them know when I when I counsel with them, I let them know that. My goal is to get your hair back, to get you all of your hair. I don't like having a client with pieces of hair. I don't like having a client with hair broken on the side, broken in the top, broken here, broken there. I like all of your hair because I can do my best work when I have all the material. So my goal is to get you all of your hair, and then when you have all of your hair, then we can do wonderful things with it. So this okay. is what I explain to them. Our goal right now is to get you all of your hair. I always get, oh, well, you honey, you've got to work on your hand or blah, 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 because we are not used to that. We are not used to having to, to black people, most black people, having all of their hair without breakage because some kind of way we think that that's the norm, to have breakage, and it is not yeah. the norm, and I refuse to buy into it, and I never bought into it, and that's why I put a product out here so that is usually my goal and 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 they're always amazed that they get their hair back so quickly and and a lot of times you know people say how will my hair grow if you keep cutting it I said well just watch and see because how does the gardener come and keep trimming your hedge and the hedge keep growing Mm You know, your gardener trim your hedge every two weeks or whenever he trims your hedge, but your hedge keeps keeps growing. Mm-hmm. You know, now, uh, because- um, Pam, is it true that when you um, say you uh, you it's two questions I have. One of mm-hmm. them relates to well, let me I just jumped. Okay, mm-hmm. is it true that um, as when your hair is damaged and then you're going through the process where your um, your hair technician is uh, um, trimming your hair or, or cutting your hair. Will, is it true that you start to get to a point where the, the trimming and the cutting becomes less necessary? No, trimming, trimming, anything that grows, anything at all that grows has to be trimmed, whether your nails, whether it's uh, grass or your hair. Anything that grows has to be trimmed because, number one, the comb passing through your hair, the brush passing through your hair is always going to tear those ends. Those ends are always, they're always vulnerable to, you know, to chip in, you know, and that sort of stuff, and that's natural. But when you have breakage that is way shorter than other parts of the hair, that is not normal. What happens, though, if somebody has breakage in their hair where, you know, it's so distinct and it has to be filled in, Again, there is a way in moving the lines together in order to fill those um, as the hair grow, break it, you know, fill in in that space. It's it's all an art, and it has to do with cutting. It's okay, just I was like ask it's you just that. when you say moving the the lines, that is, is the terminology right. hair, for cutting. Right, hair cutting is moving the hair. You know, okay. moving long lines to short lines and so on and so forth and knowing, for example, let me say, let me see if I can put it in your mind. If you want your hair to fall long at the back, follow with mm-hmm. me. If you mm-hmm. pull the hair from the back towards the front, when you let and you cut it and say like you make a cut, when you let it go, the length will fall towards the back. I have seen that. Okay. Okay. If you want your hair to be long in the front and you move it from the front to the back, when you cut it to the back, you know, you put that, when you let it go, it will automatically fall long at the front. So I don't know if you're So that has to do with the same thing, whether the hair is short, long, or whatever. Okay. Well, then, okay. So, uh, you, you brought me to another question. Let me, okay, let me remember that one it's, um, about cutting. And, uh let me get this second question now. Uh, Robin and I, actually, you know what? I don't think I was actually talking to you, Robin. I was watching your video um, on YouTube. And the, it's the one, Rob, you still there, Robin? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, when you were asking, um, you know, 
into the the in, internet world about your sides. Um, what can sh- what can be done for someone who has spaces in their sides um, outside of like say say they um, don't necessarily want to get the the um, whole body bounce treatment. Hmm. What can you? Is there advice or consultation that you can give them on how what they should do to get that how it should be? Since we know space is anywhere is not natural or not what it should be on on our scalp. Okay, what should someone of, do? Yeah, first of all, I, I would have to see if the follicle is is gone or if the follicle is there. In other words, if there is activity. That's very important because if the follicle is gone, it's gone. If there is activity still, then it also depends on how much activity is there, the length of time it would take for that hair to fill in. Now, if the hair is in a natural state, then, you know, it still has to do with, this is the key about cutting. If one part of your hair is longer than the other, the hair does not have a brain and it's not going to wait for the short hair to catch up to it. Mm-hmm. Okay? So the long hair always has to be trimmed back while the short hair grows out. So again, that has to do with moving the lines and moving the lines. Okay. So it's very important for someone to have somebody and what we as black people we really have never learned to understand how important the knowledge of cutting is not something yeah, we're afraid to cut off, really but the knowledge of cutting okay now you just painted a picture to me now see when once we get past the fear of cutting someone that has needs help in that area once they break out of the fear of cutting a low Having her hair low on the sides in that area, which which could really could turn into a hairstyle, it could be, mm-hmm. would be a good idea for them to do um, in correcting that issue. Are there any things that they should feed the scalp or the cut really would, would fix it all? Well, the, the cut usually fixes it, you know, because once the hair is growing from the scalp, it's growing from the scalp. You know, okay. once the hair uh-huh. is growing, again, we talk about hair grows from the scalp, not from the end. Right, but length, right. Oh, but length okay. shows at the end. You know, that's some really good advice because I'm telling you, it's a lot of, it's a lot of women whom have that issue with the side, with their sides, but they don't. But but, but we never want to hear the answer to be cut. But if we get a low kind of a tapered cut on the sides, I have seen cute styles like but that. But let's check okay. this out. Let me okay. say this a little bit. Let me kind of just clarify something a little bit. Okay. You know, I don't want to even, like, say, I don't want to come across negative or anything, but the problem is that hair cutting in beauty school is taught from the perspective of having all the materials. It is not taught from the perspective of not having all the material. Okay. And so, therefore, um, black people, white people, any kind of people, they really don't know how to bring the hair together when it's in a an array of pieces. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because what happens is that you have a lot of different pieces. And the skill, the skill and knowledge of cutting is very important then. So if you have all the material, that's wonderful. You can even then cut anything. When you have pieces of material, then you really have to know the art and you have to understand it very well in order to help that person. So it is not so much necessary that you have to really cut the person here all the way down low. Mm-hmm. you know, to make their hair look good, it has to do with how much material I have and how can I move it and blend it together to create a design as the hair grow and continue to create a design as the hair grow mm-hmm. and as the short hair grow out and, and, and move the long hair and just keep. Mm-hmm. So what happens, you end up 
with that person. You may have, by the time you're here, actually fill in, you probably would have had maybe five or six or seven or ten different cuts. Yeah, but you're you're feeling comfortable as it's... Exactly. You're feeling comfortable about your hair exactly. as it goes, exactly. as you go along, instead that's of trying to... That's the knowledge. Oh. Exactly. That's yeah, the okay, knowledge. I see what you're saying. That's the that knowledge. That right there, Pam, is some excellent advice, and the reason why I say that is because a lot of people are kind of like trying to figure out what in the world to do. I think it would be a good article <laughs> for you to write, <laughs> because... Um, I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you, I uh, I hear it all in regards to what can I do that I, that where well, I don't need to, you know, buy anything extra. I don't need to put nothing on my hair. But what in the world can I do while I'm going through this phase that still will be beautiful and comfortable for me? The so secret, I think that's honestly, that's a good advice um, giver honestly, right there. Honestly, honestly, and I know that this is this is not. Is people don't hear this because they hear so much, but honestly, the secret is in cutting. Yeah, I hear I hear that in what you're saying. The so it secret needs to be is someone in cutting and it's in knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because you can okay. move. You can, by the time by the time I have finished growing my clients here to let's say shoulder length, we have changed to so many different cuts and styles. Right. And they're enjoying it along the way. Right, you know, and so the and mind is not on this. Oh my God, what can I do? It's no, it, they're enjoying it. Yeah, you're having right. fun. Sure. So let me ask you because I know you were talking about before. This is um, any you know hair. The knowledge of hair really is important for all nationalities. Sure. Um, when you speak of cutting, now I've heard this. I don't know how true it is because I'm not. I mean, I'm not a professional in the mm-hmm. um, hair mm-hmm. area, um, but. When we speak of someone whose hair is um, not the same texture of someone of African descent, mm-hmm. uh, it's a different knowledge in cutting. You cannot cut it the same. Is that true? No, that is not true. It's 360 degrees in any circle or square, period. God did not do you need anything to put it in a different state before you cut it, though? Hmm? Do you need to change the state of it before you cut it? Well, um, this is this is the this is for that question. I would say this: if if you are not getting a barber look and you want to keep your hair in the tightest pattern, then you know that hair is going to be cut like barbers do. But even when a barber cuts your hair, even as it's longer. It's never really going to be totally even, and that's why people have to go back all the time because you could never get the hair even without pulling it in the fingers because you can't draw the line. You can't draw okay. the line. So basically, that's why when I do natural hair, I use a softener because when I use a softener in the hair, what it does, it detangles the curls for me. And it softens it, and I can stretch the hair between my finger. I can stretch the curls out, and I can get the design I want. And then, you know, when I let it go, it's going to fall, you know, in line. Like when I cut guys' hair, they always say, wow, because I soften guys' hair too. And when I cut their hair, it's always different than when they go to the barber because I cut it with scissors. Because you can, once you can hold that, that hair between your finger, you're always going to get a straighter line as opposed to when you are just cutting over the hair. You can never get a straight line because that's just like you eyeballing it, so to speak, and you learn, you know, how to, um, you know, how to move the shares and how to deal with the shares on the hair. But any time at all you can stretch the hair, I mean, if you can think along with me, you'll always be able to get an even line once you can you know, hold the hair between hold your it. fingers, you know, and cut it. There's, it there's seems no comparison like to me when to you two. pull it, when you hold it, and then that might be because I I don't know what I'm doing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody on this phone has tried to give themselves some bangs before. Yeah. And um, I have, because I do, I like the look of bangs. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I did it, I just, you know, went back, you know, maybe to almost the center of my head, pulled forward, and then held it and cut it. 
And then they were crooked. I kept trying, trying, trying. And then because I kept on going at it, now they're short. And then when my hair got wet, now there were these bushes right. on top. So Precisely. the next time I had a friend come over, and she was like, oh, no, you did that wrong. What she did, she grabbed the front, and she split it into three sections um, layered on top of each other and then cut them with her scissors um, pointed upward, if you can picture what I'm mm. what I mean. Now they she just, were she straighter. Elevate, than, she just elevated it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were straighter than what I did, but they were. I noticed I had more bang. Like I could put it to the side if I wanted to. It was more. It was my hair all the way from the center. Is what I noticed was the difference. Yeah, what she did actually is probably um, when you hold the hair up, the 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 length of the hair would be at the bottom. And the, the the hair at the top would be elevated a little. Right. So you and it did and it looked fuller too. Yeah, My exactly. Hair fuller because you're elevating it. the hair. That's all you're yeah. doing. Once you hold the hair at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, what you are doing is that you are leaving the length at the bottom. Anytime you move the hair away from, the length falls in the opposite direction. So wherever you move the hair away, the length will be opposite. Okay. Well, I know I do this every time you start speaking. And when you start speaking about this, the knowledge of hair, it's very interesting um, to me. And then I look up and the time is going by. I don't want to hog the whole, you know, question period. Thank you. Thank you but, for but not Robin, did I, no, but, Thank but you. Back to Robin, Robin, did I, did I answer you any, did I clarify or did I need to finish clarify? You did, and I'd like to share what my thoughts were. Um, Haki initially was sharing um, uh, what her understanding was of what you were sharing. As she was speaking, um, as she was, well, before she came, she was having the same thought process. But when she shared it, it was like she was sharing my thoughts in the beginning. She was sharing my thoughts that um, I was understanding you to say that the final product of the beauty, um, the adornment is just the beginning, middle, and the ending process. It's not mm-hmm. just a, a, a one-step idea. So it starts from when we choose our shampoos and our conditioners and the effect that it has on our hair. Then it goes into our styling, um, our styling products that we utilize and the effect that it has on our hair. Then the, the, the style that we choose and the effect that it has on our facial expression, like how it fits up and then how it fits with our overall outfit um, and look that we're trying to captivate um, with our style, mm-hmm. it, it is a total package. It's just sure. not one fraction that, you know, we say we go to the hair salon and we get our hair done and we go out and we have this style. It, exactly. It's not it's not as simplistic as that. Exactly. And don't forget your personality. You always Absolutely. want to make sure that your personality is in there. You ever see somebody with a hairstyle and they are a certain way? It just doesn't go with their personality. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. They look really off, you know. Absolutely. And so, you know, people, it's just like your dress your dress. And we know that, you know, we've gotten away from that, but really appearance is everything. Appearance is everything, and we have gotten away from appearance, but appearance, I mean, even with uh, my grandson, I tell him when he turned his paper in, you know, you, you, you have to make it look a certain way, and you have to teach kids because decent and in order, regardless of what the world does, sooner or later we're going to have to come back to decent and in order because that is the only thing that really lasts. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can either follow the crowd or we can – you know, get our head back on straight, you know, and, and that and, 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 and we are in a chaotic state because we have gotten away from decent and in order. Absolutely. You know? And that brings me to the second topic I was having when you got, um, expressed the idea about, or you share how we got away from it, and you got to share how um, she never thought of the hair as being a part of the adornment process. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think that, I think that this is not, consciously had that thought. Mm-hmm. However, we do recognize, and I promote this in our nature as being women, um, however, you do recognize that your hair 
is part of your beautification package mm-hmm. because you make sure that when you walk out the door, when you are dressed, that your outfit matches, your shoes, your purse, your jewelry, you smell good, and your hair is right. And mm-hmm. you don't ever go anywhere and you dress from from neck to feet if you're not concerned <laughs> about your hair. Like, you make sure right. that your hair is mm-hmm. it goes with your outfit, and it's just not right. You change it or you're not happy or you're, you're self-conscious about it. And mm-hmm. even if it's your afro puff or your ponytail that, whatever. or just, just your natural curls and your flower, you're still making sure that it's right and exact. Exactly. Where at least when you look in that mirror, you know, you three snaps in the Z formation, and then everybody else that sees you bears witness when they give compliments or they, they smile at you or, you know, you see someone looking at you a certain way, you know, okay, I, it wasn't just me. Somebody else is bearing witness that, you know. Yeah. It's the total package. It's the total package. And you know what I always um what I always tell my clients, remember one thing, that your hair is not the second thing on your body, it's the first thing. Mm. And we never Mm. think about that. God put our hair number one. It's the first thing on our on our body. And Mm. so that says something that hair is hair is an attraction. Everyone is attracted to hair. Everyone is attracted to hair. That's true. There is That's something true. magnetic about hair that just attracts. It definitely is magnetic. Beautiful hair <laughs> attracts. And so it's very important for us to understand the importance of caring for our hair, giving our hair the right treatment to bring out the integrity of the hair and bring out the beauty of the hair so that we can give it the best you know, in its final stage, you know, it, it will show and it will continue to be in good condition and it will continue to look good and, you know, we will continue to feel good because your hair is everything. Even my little grandson, when I do my hair, he said, Grandma, I love your hair, and he's five. <laughs> you know, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. hair is everything. It is the total package. When you get ready to get dressed, if somebody invites you to go to a wedding, you're going to say, oh, you know, what am I, my hair. Uh-huh. After yeah. you say Always that my before hair. You say, you say that before you say, what am I going to wear? Right. right. What am I going to do with my hair? And then you pick out your outfit yeah. to match yeah. what you're yeah. going to do with your hair. Yeah, my right. hair. And, 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 you know, you can put on you can put on the raggedy of clothes and have a beautiful head of hair, and you're going to look good. But you can put on the best of clothes and have a raunchy-looking head of hair, and you are going to look good. <laughs> and you're going to look just as raunchy as that hair looks. That's right. That hair brings out everything. So we have yeah. to really understand the hair is so important. It is so important, but everything about it is important. You know, the products we choose, the style we choose, the cut we choose so that whatever it is we want, if we want to have a hair long cut so that we can do different things with our hair, whatever it is we want. We want a pixie cut, we want a bob, we want an asymmetrical, however we want bangs and whatever we want to flip in the back. You know, whatever it is we want to be able to do, we might want to wear it where we can flip it up and down so you want it cut so that you can flip it up when you want to, you know, elevate it so it will flip up, and then you want it so that when you flip it down, you know, I mean, all of that is what the cut does. The cut does all of that. You know, you can get your hair cut where you can wear it up or down, you know, but people don't realize that, so therefore, you know, people are so... You know, there there is a need, and, and I would say this, and, 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 and I really don't mean any harm, there is just a real need, especially in the black community, for the stylist to really learn to cut well. And it is not being taught in school the way it should be because black people of all nationalities are the ones that suffer with so much breakage, and it is not addressed at all in beauty school. Really? So in beauty school, there's no, there's not a portion where where black hair is gone into. Is what, I think listen, that's crazy. But listen to what that I'm saying. Listen to what I just said. Okay. Only, basically, in beauty school, is how to put on a relax on the excessively curly hair. Wow. The issues of the hair is not mm-hmm. addressed. If you want to know why there is so much problems out here, that is the reason. The issues are not. Mm-hmm. The essence of the problem. Exactly. 
to issues yeah, that's interesting. that is not addressed because no one has really taken the time, black or white, to, to, to understand what is wrong with the hair. As long as for time and has gone on, as long as the hair was made to be straight, to look yeah. like something else, it's a wrap. Uh, right. We cannot only blame, um, you know, the, the the school because black people themselves had not taken the time to say, right. let me address the issue and let me see what is wrong and what is it that we really need and what is really going on. We, all mm-hmm. that we have done is gone from one style to the next, one style to the next, one style to the next, one style to the next. And those styles are never really addressing the issue. We have only somebody, somebody has come up with something, and we all have followed through with it. Mm-hmm. And that is the way. Well, Pam, it. I'm going to need you to uh, end this on a note. Uh, what you, you know, what you would like us to pick on, and if you'd like to, you can kind of highlight uh, where where we're where we're going next. Well, I would like us to, like I said before, I would like us to all remember that hair is the first thing on our body, number one, and that says a lot. And so we, our hair should always be presented in the way that it is the number one thing on our body. Our hair, if we wear our clothing and our hair is not right, it, it's not going to be right. Uh, the one thing everybody I think by now know that I'm a very spiritual person. Here is mentioned in the Bible umpteen times. God says all our hair on our head is counted. So there's much to hear. Hair is attractive. Hair is attractive to male and female. Everybody loves beautiful hair. And I think that it's just high time for us to really, as black women, stop jumping from one style to another that somebody brought in and actually look at the issue of our hair and listen and reason and when we ask the question, listen to what the person is saying, reason in our mind and see if what what if what is being said really makes sense. If it comes out to one plus one is equal to two. And if it does not, then we know we need to look further for an answer. Because we have been in this cycle too long. And if we don't stop and really start reasoning this now, we will stay in a cycle. And so I just really want everybody to know it's very important for us to really, really, really think about where we are at this point in time with our hair. Black women have lost too much hair, and they have lost too much because our hair is so important. And, of course, I want you to always remember that if you want to know anything more about how I feel about here or have questions about here, read my FAQ at www.textcarecystem.com. Send me a, a question. I'll be glad to help you out. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to um, listen in as well as those that, uh, you know, participated and uh, we will be back again um, next week thank you very much everyone have a great evening do the same bye